Okay, so we've got iron forming Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. I've gone and got what I think I need for this one. Um, right, so Fe2 plus have more occupied energy levels than Fe3 plus. Well, to start with, let's actually figure out what we've got here. Here's iron. Right, so I'm not going to write all of them. So we've got our 1s orbital, um, our 2s, our 2p, our 3s, our 3p, and then I'm going to draw the rest of them in. So we then have our 4s, which we went parallel and pair, and then we go to our 3d with our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, go parallel, and then pair. Okay, so that's our 3d. So this is your normal Fe uncharged atom. We go to the next one and we go, right, okay, if I was going to go Fe2+, plus, well, if I says you fill up and then you go take out the 4s first. So we're going to get rid of these ones in the 4s, uh, which is going to leave us with this. Okay, and then our Fe3+, plus, we're still not going to have anything in the 4s, and we're going to take out one more of these in the 3d, which leaves us with just single pairs, well, unpaired in these ones. Okay, so Fe2 plus ions have more occupied energy levels than Fe3 plus. No, they just have the same. Fe2 plus ions have more unpaired electrons than Fe3 plus. No, Fe3 plus has five and Fe2 plus has four. Fe3 plus ions are a better reducing agent than Fe2. I'm just going to go down here. So this is from the reduction series. So Fe2 plus is actually higher than Fe3 plus in the reduction series, which means that the oxidation is higher at the bottom. So Fe3 plus is actually not as good as Fe2 plus. Fe3 plus are more stable than Fe2. Yes, because we have a half filled subshell. Okay, which metal in the following ions has the highest oxidation state? It's just a case of working the whole lot. So let's see, Cr2O7 is equal to minus two. Uh, Cr2, uh, it's oxygen is minus two, so seven times minus two is minus two. I'm just gonna run it kind of fairly fully just so we're absolutely clear on this one. Uh, minus two, so Cr2 equals minus 2 plus 14, so CR2 equals plus, uh, we're going, sorry, plus 12, so CR is plus 6, it's pretty high. Okay, MnO4 minus 1, so Mn plus 4 times minus 2 is minus 1, so Mn equals minus 1 plus we're going eight, so Mn equals plus seven, so in the lead. And then we've got VO two plus, so VO minus two equals two plus, so V equals zero, out the running for sure. And Sn four plus, <laughs> nothing to calculate on that one, so winner. Okay, so we've got the copper complex shown can be used as a green food colouring. Which line in the table is correct for this complex? This is all about counting. The coordinate number. So the coordination number is how many points it's connected to. So one, two, three, four. Okay, the classification of the ligand. So this is the thing that is attached to it. So this is how many points is it binding at? So one, two, three, four. So it is tetradentate and that's it. I think it looks more complicated than it is. Okay, so we've got which of the following changes will cause the equilibrium constant to increase? Right, get rid of pressure because that doesn't actually change the equilibrium constant. Temperature will affect it in this case. Okay, so we've got um, our equilibrium constant is our products over reactants. So if I want to increase the equilibrium constant, think of this as a full fraction, what I need to do is increase my products. Okay, so I want to increase the forward reaction. What the information you have is that you have an exothermic. Okay, so if you have exothermic, then what you need to do is to push it to produce more of the exothermic. So I need to lower the temperature. Okay, we've got a graph showing the variation in delta G with temperature for a reaction. Which of the following statements is true? So in fact, let's have a look at this before we even start. So delta G 
plus and minus uh, reactions only occur uh, or feasible and we're looking for delta g equal to naught or less than zero okay um so basically anything on that line below is where it is feasible and the point where it crosses that's the zero that's the point at which you can see that's where it becomes feasible so the reaction is never feasible is not true because we have a whole chunk which is the reaction is always feasible also not true because we've got a chunk where it is not because it's above the reaction is feasible above 300k or the reaction is feasible below well look at the graph here's your 300 and everything above it is below the line so that's why it's d